Welcome to EasyMed. Let us today discuss schizophrenia. So basically, psychiatry, what I personally think is that psychiatry is a branch of medical science uh, which has a lot more um, to introspect and retrospect into. Before talking about schizophrenia, we will just discuss briefly two simple syndromes. In psychiatry, in any psychiatric disorder, in any psychiatric disorder, there are two types of problems mainly. One is neurosis and one is psychosis. Now in this neurosis problem, in neurosis, patient understands that something is going wrong with me. Okay, this may be sleep disorder or mild depressive disorder. The patient understands that something is going wrong with me. That is neurosis. And in psychosis, the patient denies. Denial. There is direct denial from the patient. The patient denies. He says that no, nothing is uh, wrong with me. And he denies to consult a physician, go to a psychiatrist. So denial. Now let us come to schizophrenia. Now schizophrenia is one of the most dreadful diseases which comes under psychosis. So the patient denies here as well. So as we start our discussion, so what is schizophrenia? So we can say that schizophrenia is a psychosis type of psychiatric disease which has a broad spectrum of disorders generally expressed in more than or equals to six months so if this is less than six months we cannot term it as schizophrenia that might be a schizoid phenomenon if it is less than six months it can be termed as a schizoid phenomenon or episode but it's never schizophrenia so schizophrenia is a chronic case it's a another point is it's a chronic case it's a chronic case so when we start about schizophrenia we should look back in the history of classifying this disease so first classification was made by Kreplin is called Kreplin's classification. So Kreplin basically classified two things. He classified dementia precox and maniac depression. So as per his words, dementia precox is a chronic and continuous type of illness. Onset is in childhood and there is gradual decline of cognition. Whereas in the maniac depression, it is an episodic type of illness and there is no cognitive decline. But in the year 1908, there was this guy, this guy, Eugene Bleuler. Eugene Bleuler was the first person to term the disease, to coin the term schizophrenia. So basically, he noticed few symptoms. He noticed few symptoms in patients and he took these symptoms together and termed this disease as schizophrenia. So these symptoms are autism. Now what is autism? Autism is basically 
फैंटसी थिंकिंग फैंटसी थिंकिंग एंड देन नेक्स्ट वॉज एम्बिवेलेंस एम्बिवेलेंस इज इनेबिलिटी टू डिसाइड लाइक लिटिल डिसीशंस नॉट सम ह्यूज डिसीशन लिटिल डिसीशंस वेदर टू ड्रिंक अ ग्लास ऑफ वॉटर और नॉट वेदर टू वियर अ टी शर्ट और नॉट सिंपल डिसीशंस द पेशेंट कॉन्ट टेक सिंपल डिसीशंस दैट इज एम्बिवेलेंस एफेक्ट डिस्टर्बेंसेस एफेक्ट डिस्टर्बेंसेस दिस इज दिस इज डिस्टर्बेंस डिस्टर्बेंस ऑफ इमोशन and there was this association of disturbance now what is association of disturbance association of disturbance is like disturbance of thoughts it's a disturbance of thought of thought process so just to remember it you can broadly remember is uh, it like four a's autism ambivalence affect disturbance association disturbance then as we move forward in the process of classifying these diseases further we get kurt schneider kurt schneider gave his schneiderian first rank symptoms or the sfrs the schneiderian first rank symptoms so this is some set of symptoms what are these first is the three thought phenomenon in the three thought phenomenon first is thought insertion thought withdrawal and thought broadcast in thought insertion patient will say that someone is putting in thought in in his brain in withdrawal he will say that someone is taking out thought from his brain and in broadcast he will think that his thoughts are accessible his thoughts are accessible by some other person or like it's broadcasted to other people then there is the three mate phenomenon the three mate phenomenon is basically mate volition mate affect and mate impulse in mate volition the patient claims that his action is controlled by some external force the action is controlled by some like the patient might even slap the doctor and say that doctor i did not want to beat you some government agency is making me do it like this and there is a mate effect that is changing changing emotions he will say that uh, his emotions are not in his control it is being controlled by or changed being changed by someone else and there is a uh, mate impulse impulsive behavior there will be an impulsive behavior like the patient might throw a cup of coffee on the um, hospital nurse and then he will claim that uh, he did not want to do it actually the Uh, some investigation government investigation agency made him do it like this then there will be auditory hallucination there will be this this is also three three types of auditory hallucinations so in this three types of auditory hallucination there will be voices arguing two or more voices are going about the patient
there will be voices commenting he will hear voices commenting on him and there will be audible thoughts audible thoughts in the audible thought is little different audible thought is like uh, the voices say aloud what the patient is thinking the patient claims that few voices speak what he thinks like his thinking is being stolen by some voices and the, the voices are speaking him these thoughts back then there is somatic passivity or tactile hallucination the ex uh, ex explanation of somatic passivity is itself the tactile hallucination the patient might feel that his legs are burning or um his uh, he his eyes are burning something like that so that is called tactile hallucination uh, just to write the example then there will be delusional perception disorder the patient will have lot of delusions so there is a wide spectrum of delusions which can occur that can be uh, delusion of uh, love there can be uh, othello syndrome there are there is a broad spectrum of delusions delusional disorders which can be seen in these patients so delusional disorder and it is one of the most common one of the most commonly seen in um, patients with schizophrenia now we can briefly say what is delusion so delusion is basically it is not fact not a fact but but the patient assumes but patient assumes it to be fact like and he might connect things in Delu delusional disorder of schizophrenia the most one of the most commonly seen, seen delusions are connected delusions like he might look at the fan and can relate to a non factual thing that everyone thinks he is homosexual now ep epidemiology if we talk about epidemiology <coughs> schizophrenia is not a widespread disorder it's a rare disorder until death till date but this incidence is increasing with pro uh, progression of this workload and a disturbance of workload and life balance the incidence of and industrialization as well and urbanization too the incidence of schizophrenia is rising until now there is 0.15 to 0.25 cases per 1000 people of schizophrenia lifetime prevalence is seen only in 1% of patients <clears throat> there is high inheritance risk the inheritance risk can be from first degree relatives second degree relatives or even from third degree relatives first degree relatives are uh, biological parents second degree degree relatives like uh they some relatives close relatives of the biological parents which might be like uncle or uh grandfather like this and third degree relative might be some far far away relatives but there is high rate of inheritance age of onset is generally adolescence and this is more found in low income group other risk factors which have been identified now are other risk factors which have been identified now are hypoxia not basically hypoxia let's write it like this perinatal insults this might be hypoxia 
this might be premature birth which as you know can again result into hypoxia this might be some maternal complications this might be infection during the pregnancy apart from this there is risk of increased urbanization urbanization and a syndrome called velocardial velocardial facial syndrome has been associated this has been recently associated with schizophrenia now as i have said already the age of onset is adolescent time but but in few cases if uh, it is found and if the age of onset is greater than 45 years then we call it as late onset schizophrenia a new term which has been given to this is paraphrenia para phrenia and this paraphrenia is more two times more common in women than in men now we come to pathology when we come to pathology of schizophrenia so the genetic factors the genetic factors which are involved in pathology are the alpha 7 nicotine receptor gene disc 1 compt nrg1 or the neuroglin this is this is neuroglin neuroglin 1 gene grm3 rgs4 and daoa this so these are the genes affected but on the biochemical basis we can see a huge increment a huge increment of dopamine and serotonin primarily these two are massively increased apart from that there is increase of gaba glutamate norepinephrine ach and nicotine now gaba gaba is in uh, is not uh, gaba uh, basically not gaba actually the gaba is decreased i'm sorry the gaba is decreased but the gaba receptor gaba receptor is increased gaba receptor is increased on the neurological basis until date until date, no neurological basis has been discovered abnormalities in cerebral ventricles limbic system and these portions other portions like prefrontal uh, frontal cortex the thalamus basal ganglia cerebellum abnormalities have been seen there but no concrete neurological basis of schizophrenia has been identified till date coming to symptoms of schizophrenia now this is very important very very important <coughs> As per the DSM-5 classification, schizophrenia can be classified into positive symptoms and negative symptoms. Now, positive symptoms are delusion and hallucinations. Now delusion as I have already said these are bizarre thoughts or bizarre perceptions physically physically impossible okay or maybe these are socially unacceptable 
so these are delusion and hallucination so there are two types of hallucination primarily auditory hallucination and visual hallucination and here the auditory hallucination is the most commonly seen most common in the negative there is evolution evolution this is this is loss of loss of will loss of will power will this is evolution there is apathy there is apathy that is that is loss of idea idea loss there is apathy then there is anhedonia 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 is loss of interest um, or loss of more pro more perfectly it should be said loss of uh, pleasure pleasure for example you said that you so in some exam you came first in the exam the patient is without any expression you sorry you did not pass the exam the patient is still without any expression so that is loss of pleasure any kind of pleasure or sadness he, he doesn't express himself that is anhedonia and there is associability associability the person doesn't want to talk with anyone the person person locks up himself in a room and stays in his own world so that is associability there is um affected blunting affected blunting that is like he does not understand understand emotion he does not understand any emotion he does not understand maybe uh, maybe someone has died and he is laughing so he does not understand emotion so that is called blunting and there is allergia there is allergia that is the verbal the verbal communication is decreased that is allergia apart from these two main symptoms there is another type of symptom which is found which is called disorganization this organization now there might be two types of disorganizations primarily that is formal thought disorder and disorganized behavior or inappropriate behavior apart from uh, in the negative symptoms these are these were the main negative symptoms let us make few more additions in the negative symptoms which are not so frequently found but they are there uh, this is called gegenhalten gegenhalten this is actually a german terminology which move means passive movement resistance passive movement resistance the patient uh, holds a posture and even if you impel him to move he resists it passively so that is gegenhalten and there is mannerism and ambi tendency ambi tendency tendency uh, ambi tendency is basically inability to decide the desired motor movement can't decide desired motor movement suppose a dog is chasing the person the person can't decide should he run away from the dog or should he stay there so that's the kind of problem which is called ambi tendency 
now how to put the diagnosis how to put the diagnosis using dsm5 if any of the symptoms so uh, taking into consideration these symptoms so delusion hallucination disorganized speech disorganized behavior and negative symptoms taking into consideration these these uh, symptoms from dsm5 if more than or equal to two symptoms two, two symptoms are present in the patient for minimum of one month and any one any one of the symptoms is from a b or c that is is from delusion hallucination or disorganized speech then we call it not firstly not schizophrenia schizoid schizoid pattern and if it progresses to greater than equals to six months then we are ready with the diagnosis schizophrenia that's it now classification as per icd-10 which is the international classification classification as per icd-10 there are seven types of schizophrenias first is the paranoid schizophrenia in paranoid schizophrenia there is hallucination there is hallucination plus delusion and this is most common this is the most common type of schizophrenia <clears throat> and most common type of delusion which is seen here is delusion of persecution is delusion of persecution now then there is catatonic schizophrenia which is mainly uh, symptomized by motor symptoms motor symptoms and the treatment the treatment mainstay of the treatment is IV lorazepam IV lorazepam and ECT or electroconvulsive therapy hebephrenic hebephrenic the characters are early onset early onset and disorganized or disorganization symptoms and negative symptoms undifferentiated it, it has less than less than one feature and it is very hard to differentiate it as schizophrenia then there is a residual so residual also has early onset early onset and later later hallucination and delusion are found hallucination and delusion are found then there is simple schizophrenia too much of negative symptoms this type of schizophrenia has too much of negative symptoms and it has worst prognosis this has worst prognosis and there is post schizophrenic depression post schizophrenic depression in these patients there is suicidal tendency now since we have described all the symptoms 
of schizophrenia as per different classifications which are, we have got throughout the timeline of history two main things or two typical things we should never miss off which is which are uh, pof pof syndrome that is schizophrenia with mental retardation and van gogh van gogh syndrome which is schizophrenia with self mutilating mutilating activity now we come into now we let's let's discuss the treatment of schizophrenia so primarily treat, treatment of schizophrenia has two modalities one is psychotherapy and another one is pharmacotherapy so psychotherapy is basically behavioral therapy behavioral therapy that we correct the try to correct the cognition of the patient we treat the behavior of the patient we try to facilitate proper behavior in the patient with repeated counseling with, uh, of the patient with the psychiatrist and there is interpersonal therapy interpersonal therapy is we managed the current interpersonal problems what are interpersonal problems these these things are like for example relationships the person's attitude towards his parents his near relatives uh, his um, uh, sexual partners might be his wife or uh, uh, girlfriend like that sexual partners and other modalities of psychotherapy are also there for example uh, goal derived psychotherapy we give the patient a goal for example uh, uh, you give the patient a goal and you set a reward for that patient for that goal so that is goal derived other therapies one of oh, uh, another famous uh, in the psychotherapy is family family therapy that, that is support from the family then we come to pharmacotherapy now the pharmacotherapy in management of schizophrenia are of two types one is typical drugs typical and one is atypical now typical drugs are basically d2 receptor d2 receptor blockers complete blockers of d2 receptor what are the examples what are the examples examples are haloperidol haloperidol chlorpromazine and atypical drugs there are a lot of this atypical antipsychotics lot of atypical antipsychotics they basically uh, they they block the d2 receptor they block d2 receptor but partially partial block not complete block low affinity they have low affinity to d2 receptors and uh, they mainly act they also has a high activity on uh, serotonin receptors high activity on serotonin receptors the most preferred or most commonly used drug among the atypical antipsychotics in uh, the treatment of uh, schizophrenia is clozapine 
Now, clozapine is actually the DOC, the drug of choice for treatment of schizophrenia. This drug uses um, uh, low D2 affinity mechanism. Now, why this is the drug of choice? Because it has very low extra pyramidal side effects. Very low extra pyramidal side effects. This drug has very, very low extra pyramidal side effects. And it also works as an antagonist on 5-HT2A, the D1 receptor, D3 and alpha adrenergic receptors. Side effects, side effects of this drug can be syncope, low blood pressure, logically Analogically, tachycardia, nausea, vomit, and there can be weight gain, weight gain. One very uh, mischievous side effect, which is often uh, uh, not uh, very uh, very much uh, talked about with that is sialuria or hypersalivation few uh, dangerous side effects which this drug can cause are agranulo cytosis myocarditis and these side effects are dose independent this drug can also cause mild seizures which is dose dependent now when you administer clozapine to a patient it is very very important to monitor the WBC count for about like uh, every week for about six months you have to monitor the WBC count every week because <clears throat> this can uh, this drug can uh, give rise to uh, leukopenia so the wbc count can go down to as much as 3000 per millimeter cube or you can also have another finding where the neutrophil count might go below 1500 millimeter per millimeter cube when we get such finding when we get such finding immediately this drug has to be stopped immediately and we can switch to other antipsychotics we can switch, switch to other antipsychotics for resistant schizophrenia It must be two plus drugs that is two or more drugs in the prescription which might be uh, clozapine which might be lorazepam with chlorpromazine haloperidol like this combination therapy has to be given so thank you for today dear doctors i hope you like the video please do share subscribe and keep on the enthusiasm.
Thanks.